Uh, so John Wesley was an English guy. And as an Englishman, he was loyal to the English crown. Right? And then, what happened in the United States in the days of John Wesley and all of that? After, after what? You know, like there was this whole big revolt. Are you with me? Where Americans were like, we're not going to do that. So Wesley had this little bit of a problem into how do we ensure that this movement can be held together, right, without like some sort of king or pope or whatever. And so he established what today we call the trust clause. I'm just going to read what I wrote here. The trust clause in Methodism goes back to John Wesley himself in the mid-18th century. By 1750, Wesley had accumulated three properties as meeting places and ministry sites for Methodist societies. He wanted to make sure that local societies could not take control of these properties from the connection he was creating. He was aware of some other religious societies where local society members had refused to accept or sought to remove clergy or had other leaders send them by their leaders of the larger society of which they were a part. Wesley had also seen situations where people in local societies became influenced by teachings contrary to those of the Methodist movement and sought to leave while taking their society's property with them. So Wesley wanted to ensure that leaders chosen by him would never be shut out or removed by local societies. He also wanted to make certain that Methodist properties were used only and always to teach established Methodist doctrine and available for Methodists for their ministries. Does that make sense? Um, today, we as the United Methodist Church, the, you are a member of Keller United Methodist Church, and you pay the banknote for this building. It's now $4.1 million loan. And guess what? You don't own the building. The annual conference owns this building, and we hold it in trust. Are you with me? Now, that sounds as anti-American as one could imagine. But we're not building an American church here, right? We're building a church of Christ that's built around different rules and different understandings. Can you think back, if I were, if I were just a pastor of a church that didn't have a trust clause, and I stood up here on a Sunday morning and said, all right, everybody that's with me, we're taking this building and we're going to go do our own thing. And if you're not with me, you can leave. How does that set me up in the future as the pastor? How does that play out? Yeah. Makes me kind of the king of this place. Get in line. I'm kind of in charge. It undercuts the overall message of Wesley around submission and um, practices of spiritual um, disciplines. We are all to be submissive as a local church to an annual conference, to a bishop. And as ones who practice submission in our polity, we hope that we can practice it in our individual lives. And so you don't hire and you don't fire your clergy. They are appointed to you. You don't get a lot of say in that. You have to trust that the bishop and the district superintendent and the people within that structure have your best interest at heart and are trying to find the best match for clergy and churches. You are trusted to maintain this property on behalf of the annual conference because the bishop can't always be here. So the bishop trusts you to manage this property and to live it out. You and I live within this network or this connectionalism, this connection that's held together, at least legally, through this thing called the trust clause. Now, why that's a hot-button issue right now is because there are movements within the United Methodist Church to disaffiliate and to take, uh, in, in large part, or in one of the, uh, not in large part, but one of the um, critiques of United Methodism is that people are tired of not owning their property. For whatever reason, that is a sticky wicket for some people, and I don't know why, but it, it just is. It's not my issue, but that's the issue that I've heard. And so part of the, um, 
um, pretense or argument even to leave is because people want to leave the denomination in order to own their own property. And then they can be the keepers because they're paying all the bills, they're running all the things, they should own that property. Fine. That is fine. That is, a, that is a different structure and a different polity. I would like to submit to you, I'm not arguing for or against the trust clause, but one of the reasons that I value and appreciate the trust clause is because it's actually rooted in a deep understanding of what biblical stewardship looks like. Um, okay, uh, here's a quick little question. Um, the shirt that I'm wearing, is this my shirt? It's not my shirt. This isn't my shirt. Um, the shoes that I'm wearing, are these my shoes? They're not my shoes. I'm wearing them. They might look like they're mine. I'm, I don't, actually, they're not mine. I am the steward of these clothes because who owns all things? God owns all things. The money that I earn, not my money. It's God's money. I'm a steward of that money. This building that we worship in, it's not my building. It's God's building. We are stewards of it. Every breath that you take, did you own that breath? Even though it's in your lungs, it's at your very core? Is that your breath? Nope. It's God's breath. You are a steward of that breath. We are stewards of everything that we've been given. In my estimation, the trust clause is a fancy way, of a legal way of describing a deep theological truth. You and I do not clothe ourselves, God clothes us like lilies in the field. You and I do not feed ourselves, God feeds us just as God feeds the birds. You and I do not own the breath in our lungs or the steps that we take, God owns all of that. We are gifted to be stewards. And as stewards, the United Methodist Church builds the whole structure around stewardship. We don't own this building. Why not? Because God owns it. This is God's building. It's not Keller United Methodist Church. This is the Church of Christ. Right? So, um, for those churches or those individuals who feel that they want to you know, move or disaffiliate or leave the United Methodist Church in part because of the trust clause, I get it. I understand it. Logically, it makes total sense. I understand it. Theologically, I find that to be very troubling, personally, as a United Methodist clergy person. As a United Methodist clergy person, I find it to be unsettling whenever we start clawing back and saying, I own stuff. Because when I start saying, I own stuff, I'm no longer submissive to Christ. I'm no longer obedient to a teacher. I'm overly confident in my own abilities to lead and guide myself in the ways that lead to salvation. I'm not sure that I need a savior because I know the right answer. And guess what? I am the king of my own castle. So from a theological standpoint, the trust clause is here not to hold churches together. The trust clause is here to embody a theological, deep theological conviction. We are not our own. We belong to God. 